The United States and many other nations have a general age ratings board for many media. In the United States, there are the TV parental guidelines, real creative I know, the MPAA for movies, and the ESRB for video games. Today we'll be discussing the last one on that list, the ESRB. Of course, other countries have their own age rating administrations. Europe's got PEGI, Japan has Ciro, and almost every other country has their own rating board. Some use colors, numbers, letters, acronyms, but the basic structure, which I'll elaborate on later, is largely similar across regions. If you understand one, you can understand them all. Originally established on September 14, 1994, the ESRB is the pain of every 13-year-old gamer who wants to play Grand Theft Auto, but that one letter on the front is as big as a barrier as gravity is to weightlessness. But why do we even need an age ratings administration in the first place? Well, to understand that, we're going to have to go all the way back to the beginning. Originally, there were no age ratings at all, because for about the first couple of years, video games were a largely unregulated market. From companies stealing designs to deceptive marketing practices, a wide variety of arcade games, and more, it was hard to find a general standard on video games. That was until the very same arcade games were ported to the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. They didn't port many to the Sega Master System, Nintendo Entertainment System, ColecoVision, or Intellivision, because they were simply too underpowered. When time came for more powerful hardware, popular arcade games were suddenly coming to the home television and some controversial original home console games sprung up too. The main villains were Mortal Kombat, a target for its excessive violence that parents thought was ruining the brains of the youngsters, and Night Trap, a famous interactive movie? Game? I don't quite know, but it was certainly on the Sega Genesis and people were definitely confused on what exactly that was. But whatever it was, it concerned parents based on the vaguely sexual nature of the game. However, most people looking at it now can see it's a confusing and clunky game about trying to rescue a group of friends from invaders with some odd technology. In fact, while Mortal Kombat maintains its ESRB mature rating to this day, the 25th anniversary edition of Night Trap on the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch has a T for Teen rating. In 1993, the United States government issued a warning to major game publishers stating that they needed to make a general age rating system after getting one too many complaints about the mature nature of the games with ambiguous target demographics. And thus, Sega's Video Game Rating Council, or the VRC, was born. It was almost a hybrid of the MPAA and the soon-to-be-birthed ESRB. Consisting of three ratings, they went as follows. GA for general audiences. May 13, intended for more mature audiences, such as those in their early teens. MA-17, which was not intended for minors and may include blood, sexual themes, and heavier violence. However, parents were still confused. Yeah, as if this is much better. The United States government deemed this insufficient and thus representatives of both Sega and Nintendo were sent to testify in court in defense of their products. Nintendo was definitely using this to their advantage as they were tearing up Sega stating that they agreed in how controversial games like Night Trap were going as far to say that Night Trap would never appear on a Nintendo console. Whoops. September 1994 rolls around and the ESRB is unleashed. ESRB, which actually stands for Electronic Software Ratings Board, is still controversial among gamers today. But before I can get to that, let's break down what each individual rating means. Over time, there have been age ratings dropped from the ESRB, so today we're just going to take a look at the modern and in-use ratings. The ESRB's system is devised of five ratings, those being everyone, everyone 10 and up, teen, mature, and adults only. I will not really be talking about the adults only rating as they are not legally allowed to be sold in stores or to anyone under the age of 18. Most contain intense gore and or strong sexual content. It is also the rarest ESRB rating. The ESRB has 30 different criteria that they individually scale to determine where to place the game in question. They are all shown on your screen right now. Now this is where problems arise, as all the people rating the game in question have different criteria as to what the difference between cartoon violence and fantasy violence is, and where the line is blurred into actual violence. Usually you can end up finding a pattern in which criteria end up in each group, so let's break it down with... The everyone rating is surprisingly rare. 
especially considering that there aren't many differences between it and the Everyone 10 Plus rating. Games such as the upcoming Sonic Colors Ultimate fit in this category, and it's usually just some good old family friendly platforming game, an educational game, or something generally acceptable or a basic game. Unfortunately, the minor differences allow for it to be easily confused with the 10 plus rating. And let me ask you, are there any real differences between this and Super Mario 3D World? I don't, I don't think so. Generally, you will see the tags mild fantasy violence or cartoon violence associated with these categories, although there are some with no descriptions or descriptions with mild suggestive themes. Overall, I don't have many problems with this category, so let's move on to its older, more popular sibling. This rating is basically the bridge between everyone and teen, as it allows for a bit more violence such as guns but they aren't really guns, they're just toys, and maybe a slight use of some more tame swear words. Games like Rayman Legends, most Nintendo games, Astro's Playroom, and many others fit into this category. Mostly consisting of adventure games or platformers, it's some good and clean fun, even for kids who aren't over the age of 10. Personally, this is the age rating that is definitive and acceptable for all ages, as there are some surprisingly mature teen rated games. At this point, you can begin to extract morals from the adventures similar to the lessons that are attempted in children's television or movies from the likes of Disney, Nickelodeon, and Cartoon Network. Most often, you'll see the tags that showed up in everyone but without the word mild attached to it. There may be some blood and deeper themes like the involvement of death. Alcohol or the use of drugs may be subtly hinted at, but you've probably watched Alice in Wonderland? I believe that this age group is generally suitable for all ages. The T14 rating is most similar to the TV14 or PG13 rating established by the TV Parental Guidelines Association and the MPAA, respectively. Here you have the dicier content, such as prominent use of blood and guns are totally meant to be guns! That kill! While there is no dismemberment and barely any gore, the violence can still be incredibly realistic and potent. Modern games like Uncharted 4, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Destiny 2 fit snugly into this category. While they are less explicit in their murder than some mature games, they are killing people. Cigarettes, drugs, and alcohol, and their subsequent effects are on subtle display, like McCree having a cigar in his mouth in Overwatch. There may be an option to drink a beer in a cutscene or a healing item acting similar to a real life stimulant. Instead of fighting obviously fake alien-like creatures such as the Bokoblins of Zelda and the Goombas of Mario, the enemies you encounter are either entirely humanoid in nature, or humans, or animals. Generally, the games in this category can appeal to those at or above the age of 13. This is the first genre where a lot of the famous ones are massively multiplayer or competitive in nature. The most common type of multiplayer game is the first person shooter, a genre that allows players to use guns to kill others while working towards a common goal, whether that be fighting for the most kills in a round, eliminating the other team in a deathmatch, or fighting against dozens and dozens of others to be the last one standing, battle royale style. Voice or text chat is prominently used to communicate with your friends or teammates, and as the ESRB states, online interactions are not rated by them, meaning that it is up to the player to moderate those aspects themselves. These games can be gritty, gory, violent, bloody, sweared, and sexual, and mature. Generally, these games are not for those under 17 years old. Most of them contain heavy violence, which most of them are towards human-like characters in The Last of Us and Grand Theft Auto. They may contain alcohol and drug use prominently at that, and they may include real gambling. But an M rating has never stopped that. If you'd like more information on video games, loot boxes, gambling, and microtransactions, check out my video entitled The Issue of Microtransactions and Loot Boxes in the top right corner. Most people associate brutal and bloody games like Mortal Kombat and Doom Eternal as a textbook M rated game. However, that's rarely the case. There are often a lot of cool morals and themes to learn from these games, which leads me to my problems with the ESRB as a whole, and how I think I can fix it. Take a look at Japan Zero, and you'll notice that they have an extra age rating for those 15 years of age. I fully support this rating, as the maturity levels between those at the age of 13 and 17 is vast. However, while it still depends on the person, the maturity levels of a 15 year old and that of a 17 year old may not be as different as you may think. However, instead of an additional age rating, I suggest a fluid scale, similar to the one on screen now. I propose that this is most similar to the mature rating at the start, 
A10 being a classic M-rated game. Let's say the general consensus is based on either playing the game, a rating proposed by an overhead organization, or a parent's view of the trailers and advertising media. To explain how it works, I'll use a base number 7. The score that it is given is then subtracted by the whole 10, hence why the scale is based on 10. In this example, it leaves 3. The current M rating represents the game as a game appropriate for those 17 years old or older. I think that's fair, so let's subtract 17 by 3. That leaves you 14 years old, or the age that is generally appropriate for the game in question. Let's do some examples with Astro's Playroom, Doom Eternal, and The Last of Us Part 2. I would personally score Asher's Playroom a 2 on this scale. 10 minus 2 is 8, 17 minus 8 is 9, and I think that's pretty fair for this game. If you'd like to see my full thoughts on Asher's Playroom, check out my 60 second review on it which you can find in the top right hand corner. Quick pause, from here until the end of the section I will be showing some pretty bloody sequences from the trailers and the other gameplay trailers. If you do not like realistic blood or even semi-cartoonish blood, feel free to turn off the video, skip to the timestamp shown, or listen to the background. Doom Eternal is complicated. It's incredibly violent, bloody, gory, nasty, and yet there's no foul language in it whatsoever. It's dark, sure, but swearing? Nah. Where well, there are med packs, they just go right in your health bar and there isn't really any reference to drugs and alcohol at all. And sex? Never heard of it. It's a surprisingly clean game with all of the this going on. That's why I'd place it at a 7.5 on the scale. For 15 year olds and up, as long as they can handle the cartoonish levels of blood. With the cartoonish, almost humorous creatures. All of the violence is done against alien creatures. Demons specifically. So while it's gory, it's not like you're ripping up humans. And I saw this one review that said, since you're killing hell demons to save Earth, it's technically the most Christian game on the planet. Take that Crave Entertainment and your sorry excuse for a Bible game you got beaten by Doom. The Last of Us, especially Part 2, fully deserves that full on M rating. It's incredibly violent against humans, with some sexual content, alcohol, and oh boy, a lot of language. I'd rate it at 10 on my scale for all of the above and more, and while no doubt there is a meaningful story and lesson behind it, it's not for the faint of heart. And that's it! Blood and guts are gone. Let's wrap this up. So that's my analysis of the ESRB, their missteps, what I think is wrong with them, and I mean, they've made some pretty funny mistakes in the past. They rated Grand Theft Auto San Andreas adults only for a sexual scene that was scrapped from the game. However, the files were still there, and although it was inaccessible without a mod, they still gave it the classic adults only, which you can still find printed on some old copies. We've talked about their inception, how they've changed, and I've given my two cents on what I think can be done to improve their system. If you want to give my system a try, the steps are determining a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, subtracting 10 by the chosen number, then subtract the result by 17. That's your age rating. You can find some pretty standard age ratings and some reviews by both parents and kids at commonsensemedia.org, which I heavily recommend. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, double thank you. I hope this helps in any way, whether that be your shopping for a kid, watching for entertainment, or using this as evidence as to why you, a 13 year old, should be able to play the fancy adult M rated games. If you enjoyed, subscribe or leave a like, dislike it if you dislike it, and tell me what I did right or wrong in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with me? Let me know. Let's start a discussion. Until next time, I'm out.